I think about the welfare and the well-being of children, you know? Mm -hmm. He thinks he's doing the best thing, you know? Right. But what is, but I want to get at, um, I love that because that is what Joe's thinking, um, but we're going to get into thoughts and I want to stick with feelings because um, that's really where we connect with others. So why, so he thinks he's doing the best thing for his kids. Why does he think he's doing the best things for his kids? Does he have some sort of feeling under that of, of that motivates that thought? Possibly the fear of like what he reads and stuff, possibly that happening to mm -hmm. his children, you know, he want that to happen. And yeah. That motivates him. Yeah, that fear that that might be his kid next to the paper. Yeah. Responsibility. Yeah. Responsibility. yeah. I have you, you, and then you. Uh, like threatened, I think. Um, both mm -hmm. in his job and as a parent. Um, so like on several levels, he just feels like he's not really in control and is trying to gain control. Um, if you could call it an emotion, I would say ambition. Because mm. I see the main motive for this is getting elected again. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that is definitely mm. in there. So yeah. it's kind of like long-term investment for him. Mm. He's worried about his job. Mm -hmm. He wants to ensure that his job continues to exist. Sure. Yeah. And, and not only his job, but get promoted maybe. Right. Yeah. I had a hand over here. Yeah. I think he, a, there's a little bit of disgust or like superiority over this, like these homeless drug kids, you know, uh -huh. just bad people who are just ruining right. society. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. But is there something. Um, no. No. Is there something that Joe might be feeling about those individuals, I guess? I guess we said before, there's fear because it's so close to home. Mm. That could just easily be someone he knows or his children in a couple of years. Just lack of understanding. I mean, mm. lack yeah. of, you know, mm. having that shared you know, experience that they, another person might have. So he doesn't have much, much understanding, yeah. Maybe contempt, possibly, just because that's mm. his platform for getting elected to clean up Main Street if he doesn't do that. Mm. Then and maybe he, he has contempt for them because he doesn't exactly. understand them. Yeah. Because they are the other. You know, we all have our fear and our anger towards the other. Probably feels pressured mm. because he keeps getting all those calls and he has to perform well and make everybody happy. So he feels pressured to have to do that. Uh, I was going to say pride, just because, yeah. like, you know, look at this beautiful life I've built. Why wouldn't anybody else want it? Mm -hmm. now I'm going to pause this here and I'm going to ask try to now. Put yourself in Joe's feeling. How would we be feeling if we're Joe and we're the politician and we're getting emails and phone calls? We read the stories about drugs and no one's. Really, we don't really know anything about drugs, you know. I'm, I, the, Joe is not a, a, a medical doctor. He doesn't really follow the latest science. He reads the Wall Street Journal and CNN, and here's their science. Yeah. yeah. Um, so how would we feel if we were Joe? Getting all this pressure from basically just like one side of this issue, like trying to get him to deal with it. But um, this is when SSDP needs to come in and put pressure on him from the other side. <laughs> well, what do we feel when we feel pressure? Like when we, so I want to get at a little, I want to take it a little deeper. Um, when we feel in a pressure situation, like let's say the midterm or the final is tomorrow and you didn't feel like you studied enough and now you feel pressure, right? You have to, you got to cram in the study material. Is there something underneath that pressure? Anxiety. Anxiety. And what's underneath anxiety? Fear of failure. Fear. Fear of failure. So when Joe feels pressured and he wants to keep his job and wants to get a better job, he's scared about his job. Joe's scared about his job. <laughs> How many of us are scared about our jobs? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, those people about to graduate who's scared about jobs, right? So that's what I'm trying to get at here, is we can feel that same thing that's going on in Joe. It's hard, because Joe, you know, Joe's story uses a lot of loaded language. He it uses language of, you know, uh, the, the druggy homeless and and moral fiber, and you're destroying everything, and you're the worst. But underneath all that, what Joe's really saying is he's scared about his job. 
doesn't want to look like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Either. Yeah. He has to portray like a confidence that you know I know, you know I'm in this position of power. I have to portray it. Yeah. I can't let anyone know that I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, because if they know, then I'll just sound out. Yeah. Right. I feel like we're focusing on all the negative stuff. I think that uh -huh. from what I get out of this, sure. this guy really believes he's right and he yeah. really like sees this ambition. Like I'm sure. gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna just clean everything up and uh -huh. they're gonna love me and Right. I mean you could take the fear out, but I really see like, you know, he uh -huh. thinks like this is his, his God-given yeah. responsibility. Sure, you know, sure. So let's play with that for a second. So right. if so, let's say Joe's really feeling a lot of ambition right. and it thinks that he's on the right path. If he has those thoughts, what's the feeling underneath those thoughts? What, what would be the motivation for thinking I'm doing something that's going to improve my society? Um, answer first? My first answer is fear. Uh, because, fear, so. uh, yeah, he's, he doesn't, you know, he's unsure of what might happen you know, if those, if the others were, you know, allowed to thrive or, you know, be, become a better part of society. So his view of like cleaning things up is, you know, already rooted in, in a negative uh, energy because he's looking down on other people. So yes, here, maybe it's even fear that if he doesn't do this, if he doesn't act, then everything's going to fall apart. He's in a position of power and if he doesn't do something, he's scared that that inaction, that waiting too long, might might result in a lot of a lot of social chaos and problems and whatever. Well, and especially because he's got a duty he has to do during his term. Yeah, he's only got two years or four years or whatever it is. Does that? Do you feel somewhat complete on that, or do you want to no, delve? That's, no, that's, that's not not that's what you're I, going I think for. Kind sure, of two routes, and uh -huh. I don't think they're necessarily mutually exclusive. They're not. I don't think no. there's one that's right or the other, but no, you know, not right or wrong. you can either look at it like fear, or it could just be one of those guys who's you know like an optimist and he really actually thinks he's doing the right thing, whether he is or not. You know, that's kind of his ambition is fueled side. by right. it. The lack of logic in his sure. argument. I think he feels justified. Because he's wrong. To right. Well, you know, like okay. All right. So I want to. I'm going to interject myself here, because what we're getting lost in a little bit um, is we're getting lost into what Joe is thinking or what he's feeling. Well, well, I think there's two different. So maybe this is a good time to make this distinction. Um, there are two things that we we have. Right, we have feelings, our emotions. I feel angry. I feel sad. I feel happy. I feel joyful. Um, and then I think things. I think you're a bad person. I think this plan will save the world. I think I. Um, X is wrong. Yeah. Um, so, so thoughts and feelings are two separate things, and and often our feelings motivate our thoughts. So often. We think something, we think this is the plan that works because we feel uh, optimistic about it. We feel hopeful about it. Um, it could be the other way. Sure. Uh -huh. It could go the other way too. Your thoughts. Is it Affect like, your feelings like Joe's, too, yes. Joe's feelings, you know, that uh, he's do, doing the right thing, like, uh -huh. came, come from, I don't know, his thoughts. I think. Yeah. It, it definitely is a two-way street. It goes back and forth and they both influence one another. Right. But I want to make a distinction here because, and the reason I want to make a distinction, oh, right. Um, one thing that might be helpful for people is on the back of this, I was going to talk about this later, but we, uh, I'm talking about it now, um, <laughs> is on the back sheet, page six, is a whole list of MVC feelings. It's a feeling list. These are what these are just a list of feelings, feelings when you are satisfied and feelings when you're unsatisfied. Um, a whole list of feelings. You don't necessarily need to read all of them. I'm not going to quiz you on them. Uh, but take a you know take a look at those. But so the reason I want to make that distinction, why I think that distinction between feelings and thoughts are so important, is it comes back to that enemy image thing. So if we stick with, we don't connect at the thought level, in my opinion. We trade thoughts, we debate, but we don't connect there as human beings connecting with one another. We connect over shared emotions, over shared trust, over that shared honest and empathetic relationships. That's how we connect. So we don't connect with people when we just want to work with what they're thinking in their brain. Because uh, your brain's all in here. It's not out here. Our relationships are out here. Um, 
So, so if we want to, so, so why I want to touch on that with Joe is that if we get caught up in whether Joe's thought pattern is logical, we're going to conclude, right, that it's illogical. Well, once we include, once we conclude that Joe's thought progress is illogical, well, then Joe is now wrong. Joe is now misleading. He might be manipulating. It's very easy slippery slipperiness towards from one thought to the next thought. So we don't want to stick with Joe's thinking here. I think we're right that Joe thinks he th he's doing the right thing. He definitely thinks that, but we don't want to connect with him about those thoughts or debate with him on whether he, his thinking is correct. We want to connect with what he's feeling behind. So if Joe thinks he's right, what feeling do you hear uh, under that? Um, enthusiasm. Mm. Yeah. If he thinks you like he's the, you know, I'm just the crusader on the white horse. And yeah. I'm excited about cleaning this place up. Yeah. I can do it. I finally am right. here. I put in all this long hours of a campaign trail. Put in all this hard work. I promised my constituents I was going to clean up Main Street. And now I'm here. Now I get to do it. And that's exciting, right? When we, when we put in a lot of work uh, to, to get something done and then we're finally at the place where we get to get it done. Or we get to see the completion of a project that we've been working on for months and months and months or years and years and years or decades and decades and decades like legalizing marijuana. <laughs> so does that feel somewhat complete about what Joe might be feeling there? Or his enthusiasm? He could feel confident if he mm -hmm. believes he's doing it. He feels confident, which comes out of that enthusiasm, right? Yeah. It just depends on him. Right, right. I mean, it's hard because we're dealing with fictitious people. I made up in my brain and I gave you only like <laughs> eight sentences to figure out what Joe's thinking and feeling. But, um, yeah. I think he's also feeling love like, toward his mm. kids and his... Yeah. <coughs> Society. Right. He cares about his kids. Don't we care about kids too? <laughs> so even if we go down that path, so notice now we've gone down two paths with Joe. One path is that he's scared about his job, and we can all we all just rose our hand. We're like we're all scared about our jobs. Or Joe loves his kids and loves his community and really and is excited that he's finally in a place where he can help them. And don't we all know that feeling too? Passion. Yeah, that passion. Sense of responsibility. Yeah. I think Joe is just like us, honestly. Just, yeah. just not as informed. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just not been connected in the right way with the right stuff. Um, so I think everyone kind of got the idea of that exercise. I hope that. We're, empathy the, is a felt experience. We feel what that person feels, and we connect with that. So even though, and it's hard, right? Like reading Joe was hard, right? To, and, and especially when you're sitting in that lobby room um, and you're talking to them face to face, or you're sitting at home and you read the newspaper, it's hard to read through all the gunk they throw out there, that we throw out there. But if you can do it, there's something underneath there that we can feel too. I think it's more tangible feelings are than thoughts. You know, yeah. Just like a lot more. They are. They're a lot more. I think that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> so, uh, oh. oh no, I was just going to say it's because every feeling is genuine and unbiased. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so more honest than just, a thought. It is. just happens and it occurs. Mm -hmm. I think also we feel that, you know, that it's more tangible. Like the feelings are more tangible than thoughts because we can more easily guess by somebody's expressions or demeanor how they're feeling um, rather than just straight from that what they're thinking. You might be able to interpret what they're thinking from how they seem to be feeling, but it generally know comes from them. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love everything that's being said right now. That really gives me a lot of joy and a lot of optimism that people are, are on the same like, wavelength with me, and that's really awesome. So thank you all for sharing that. Um, sure, and then I want to move on, but yeah. Oh, fuck, I lost it. Oh, no. <laughs> you always bring it back up, too. By the way, feel free to interrupt me at any point by sticking up your hand. This is not meant to be a me lecture. Like, please interject and talk. It was good, and it'll, I'll, it'll come back. Great, cool. I'll be, I'll be waiting for it in anticipation. Um, 